Praise the Lord, everyone. Well, praise the Lord, everyone. This is another day the Lord has made. We're rejoicing. We're being glad in it. We're praising God today, amen, for our Sunday morning service on this Sunday, May the 30th, in the year of our Lord and Savior, 2021. We're beginning our services as we open up with hymn number 274, There Shall Be Showers of Blessing. So please stand with us. Join with us in number 274, There Shall Be Showers of Blessing. Amen.
We just thank you. We give you praise, Father God, for the great and awesome God that you are. Father God, we just ask, Father God, that as we are about, Father God, to, 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 to gather, to fellowship, to hear your word, Father God, that you will be present here, Father God. Father God, you said for where two or three are gathered, Father God, you are in the midst. So we invite you, Father God, we invite your Holy Spirit, Father God, to touch us, to guide us, to lead us. So that we, Father God, will hear your word and we will listen. Father God, we thank you for all of those that are here in person. We thank you for even those that are listening to us virtually. And we just ask, Father God, that may today's message be a blessing to them. We ask your blessings upon Pastor as he's about to bring your word. And we ask, Father God, that your word will be food for our soul. We just pray, we give you thanks, Father God, for those that are here and for those that are still yet to come or still yet to listen. We just give you the glory, the honor, and the praise, and we ask you, these and all, in the name of Jesus, for Christ's sake, amen. against thy neighbor. 
Neither shalt thou desire thy neighbor's wife, neither shalt thou covet thy neighbor's house, his field, or his manservant, or his maidservant, his ox, or his ass, or anything that is thy neighbor's. May the Lord God add a rich blessing to the reading and hearing of his most holy word. And as we continue in worship, our next hymn is hymn number 287, Christ is all. Hymn number 287, praise the Lord. Thank you. 
Don't you do it, young people, and don't worry. Very good. We hear you. Very good, children. Say something, Pastor, so I can kiss my wife. Say something, Pastor, so I can kiss my husband. Praise the Lord. 
Bible Church Center. Thank you, Pastor. You're welcome. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So happy birthday to one and all, and happy birth, happy anniversary, amen, to Ricardo and Sister Sean Carter. Amen. Also, uh, we're wishing everyone a blessed Memorial Day tomorrow. Greater love that no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. That's taken from John 15, verse 13. Also, uh, we want to thank God for our answered prayer. Sister, uh, Sister Anita would like us to give a shout out, amen, on behalf of her mommy in India. Amen on behalf of her daughter, to God be the glory. And thank God for answering the prayer. Praise the Lord with uh, uh, reports of negative. Amen. We also want to give a shout out to everyone that's listening by way of Facebook, Instagram, by way of YouTube, or even by telephone conference line. We want to thank you for listening all over this world, praise God. And literally, our message is going all across the world where prior to this pandemic, we were just reaching folks within these four walls. But God had bigger, and God has bigger and better plans. Yeah. 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 That are far more outreaching than we could ever imagine. So we give God the glory and the praise that we're reaching people all over the world, literally. Amen. As we start to this pandemic, he's given us technology to do so, and so we thank you, Lord. Amen. All things work together for good Amen. to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Yes. We also want to thank God, Amen, for using uh, our own Reverend Vanessa Reefer as she brought forth the word last Sunday night. Thank God, Amen. She's one of our powerhouse preachers here at the Second Baptist Church, and she brought forth the word of God. We thank God that she uh, laid at the Lord's feet, amen, to get a word for the people of God. And we have been truly blessed and edified. Amen. Thank you very much for ministering to our souls. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Also, uh, from our scholarship committee, uh, the deadline for scholarships uh, applications uh, for our members of Second Baptist Church is next Sunday. And so to all parents, guardians, and children, who are graduating from preschool, kindergarten, high school, college, or graduate school. Uh, we would like to recognize you for your accomplishments. So if you're, if you're moving on from elementary school, middle school, and junior high, uh, we will recognize you as well. Now please submit the following information to the scholarship committee by uh, June the 6th. That's next Sunday, June the 6th. Your full name, your current school and grade, uh, your school and grade in September of 20, 2021, as well as your school or college graduating from May or June of 2021. And then we need your parent and or guardian's contact telephone number. Now, if you're graduating from high school and will attend college or trade school in the fall of 2021, please indicate that when you submit your information. You may be eligible for the Amanda B. Wilmore, Beulah M. Johnson, or Gwendolyn T. Dyson Scholarship Award. Uh, you may send this information along with a graduation picture, if you wish, to SBC, that's standing for Second Baptist Church, SBCRoselleNJ at gmail.com. This information will be posted on the bulletin board as well as our social media pages. We also have uh, several uh, notices here. Your kind and thoughtful expression of sympathy is deeply appreciated and gratefully acknowledged. Pastor Moore, officers and church members of Second Church family of Second Baptist Church, thank you for your kind expression of sympathy and thoughtfulness. It is deeply appreciated and will be remembered by the family of Brother Leon Evans, that's the uncle to Sister Dolores Whitehead. They say thanks again. This comes from Marie Melvin, who is the daughter of Brother Evans. As you know, uh, Brother Evans turned 100 years old, and then six days after his 100th birthday, he went home to be with the Lord, to God be the Lord. But what a testimony. Also, we have a card that says, Grateful and Blessed. Amen. Uh, it says to the Usher Department, Thank you for your kindness. Joe loved putting on the bands and ushering people into the house of God. Please keep me and my family in prayer, as I will, uh, as I will yours. Joe and uh, it's, it, Joe and I, as I will, Mrs. Joe and as I will, Miss Joe. Please forgive me. I'm trying to read through this. 
as I will miss Joe and will always remember uh, his love for Southern Baptist Church. And, this, and it says, thank you so much. And this is coming from Vivian Thompson. That's our Deacon Joe Thompson's uh, wife. Amen. Our Deacon Joe went home to be with the Lord. And we give God the glory and praise for every remembrance of him. And it says, thank you, God, for you, from Ephesians chapter 1, verse 16. Also, uh, there's another card, and it just so happens to be the, the exact same card, but from someone else from another state. <laughs> Hallelujah. And it says, grateful and blessed, dear Reverend Moore and Second Baptist Church family, thank you so much for your kindness, generosity, and support given to my family during our hours of believing. My late aunt held Second Baptist Church, Second Baptist Church close to her heart, and she loved her church family, to whom much is given, much is required. Praying God will continue to bless you and give you the desires of your heart. A blessing is just what you need, right when you need it. Thanks again. And it comes from, sincerely, Mary A. Nelly, Mary, Mary A. Kelly, niece of the late Mrs. Edith May McIntyre. To God be the Lord. And then lastly, uh, we have correspondence. Thank you, Jesus. It says Pastor Moore, ministerial staff, diaconate, missionaries, and Second Baptist family. Thank you for easing the sadness of loss by helping to make the homegoing of my mom, Edith McIntyre, such a wonderful celebration of her life. Despite the occasion, it was good seeing you all. Thank you so much for your prayers and words of encouragement, kind words in remembrance of mom and all of your kind deeds. Second Baptist Church will always remain my church home and my number one church family. It is with that sentiment that in honor of my mom, Edith May Walker McIntyre, we are donating $1,000 to the Second Baptist Church Scholarship Fund. Thank you all for being such a blessing during our time of sorrow. Peace, love, and God's best blessings, Deacon Randy McIntyre, Jennifer, Michaela, and Adam. services. We have our prayer uh, call line Monday through Friday 5.45 in the morning as well as 6 p.m. and also Friday at 12 noon by dialing 605-475-3215. Access code 916-920-POUND. For that uh, additional information, I can give it to you immediately following our services that are attended here. Weekly, virtual Sunday school, 9, 9 o'clock to 9.45 every Sunday morning. Uh, there's a new ID number by way of Zoom. ID number is 884-3320-4242. And if you're a New Jersey, New York resident, you can also phone in at 646-558-8656. There's also in-person worship service with social distancing, Facebook and Instagram Live, as well as telephone conference call every Sunday morning at 10 a.m., also by way of YouTube and playback through YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Then we have our Tuesday Bible studies, 10.30 a.m. and 7 p.m. You can call that telephone conference line at 978-990-5000, access code 374-329-POUND. And then Thursday night, we have our Thursday evening Young Adult Bible Study every Thursday at 7.30 p.m. with Pastor Mike by way of Zoom. Uh, the Diaconate also has their prayer meeting every Thursday evening at 7 p.m. So Diaconate members, amen, those that can't make it out, amen, uh, physically, we know that there's that accessibility of praying together on the Diaconate prayer line. So you can contact Deacon Joseph Williams, you can contact uh, your own uh, Reverend Beverly Jones 
has got home chairs, I'll put further information in detail, or Paul, uh, uh, walking deaconess uh, Ruth Abraham, or walking deaconess uh, Juliet Hallelujah. Uh, Thursday night, that's the, uh, our prayer meetings. Now, also, please note, church family, as our doors are open for limited church services in person, uh, please stay connected for updates through your diocesan ministry leaders. Measures are in place to ensure confidential health screening. So we're still practicing social distancing, uh, hygienic practices. We're still wearing our mask. And uh, we're asking that everyone, with the exception of those that are speaking at the microphone, uh, to please uh, continue until further notice, because we have to have our, uh, uh, our medical professionals as well as our church leadership, amen, to uh, coordinate uh, plans how we can reintroduce the entire church uh, without the mask, without the gloves. But we want to take proper protocol procedures uh, to be preventive and precautionary in nature, not to be mean-spirited to say, uh, you have to have a mask. We, we, we just strongly urge and suggest uh, that you wear your mask, cover your nose, cover your mouth, amen, and wear uh, your gloves, praise the Lord. Because uh, since, the, uh, since the pandemic, we have not had one person to contract the coronavirus as a result of the Because we have been taking precautionary measures and have been doing it properly. So we've never missed a Sunday morning service. Where other churches still haven't opened to this day. And God be glory. Not boasting and bragging. I'm just thanking God, amen, that we've sought the face of the Lord for the wisdom through its membership and especially to our medical professionals because they even know best, praise the Lord. And you want to know about medicine and about science, go to those that practice medicine and science to God be glory. And then they can give you the proper information as opposed to a person at the shoemaker trying to tell you how to do brain surgery. Hallelujah. To that one, for good measure. <laughs> Amen. And so uh, we ask that when you're in service, uh, please continue to practice the proper protocol. Now, uh, there are also ways uh, that you can continue uh, to give to Second Baptist Church. You can uh, bring your offering in to the church as we gather every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. You can also uh, give your offering to your assigned diocesan member. And they'll be glad to bring your offering here. Or mail your offering to Second Baptist Church, P.O. Box 304, Roselle, New Jersey, 07203. You can also drop off your offering at the church parking lot back door. Our trustees will be glad to meet you there every Sunday morning between the hours of 9 and 10 a.m. That's every Sunday morning between 9 and 10 a.m. at the back parking lot door. Also, lastly, you can give electronically through our Apros website. You simply text GIVE, the dollar amount that you'd like to give, and then send it to the number 833-561-0179, and then follow the prompts. Praise the Lord. I hope and trust that I've covered all of our notices and announcements. I hope I haven't missed anything. If I have, charge it to my head, not to my heart. There have been a plethora of announcements to make. But the most important announcement of all is this. Jesus Christ, he's soon to come. Yeah. And it'll pass to be ready because ready or not, yeah. Jesus is coming. Yeah. My question is, are you ready? Yeah. And so yeah. could you look to your neighbor, to your left, to your right, in front of you, or behind you, and say, neighbor, yeah. ready or not, yeah. Jesus is coming. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Could you look to another neighbor and say, neighbor, yeah. oh, neighbor. Uh, 
Yep, Miss Tyler. Okay, we're going to have a stand up and show yours, Miss Tyler.
very good children. All right. Fear me and keep all my commandments. 
always that it might be well with them and with their children forever. Go say to them, get you into your tents again. But as for thee, stand down here by me, and I will speak unto thee all the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which thou shalt teach them, that they may do them in the land which I give them to possess it. Ye shall observe to do them there, you shall observe to do therefore, as the Lord thy God hath commanded you. You shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. You shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God hath commanded you, that you may live, and that it may be well with you, and that you may prolong your days in the land which you shall possess. May the Lord God have rich blessings to the reading and hearing of his most holy word. I'd like to use for a topic this morning. Remember not to forget. Remember not to forget. Almost sounds like a contradiction, doesn't it? Amen. Almost like an icy warren. Remember, forget. Remember, forget. I'm not saying remember to forget. I'm saying remember not to forget. Uh, here we are tomorrow, and even in this over this weekend, uh, uh, our nation is in a celebratory position of celebrating what we uh, know as Memorial Day, mm -hmm. and that's generally the last uh, Monday of every. May of every year. And Memorial Day, originally known as Decoration Day, is a federal holiday in the United States for honoring and uh, for honoring and mourning the military personnel who have died in the performance of their military duties while serving in the United States Armed Forces. This holiday emerged from the Civil War traditions of decorating the graves of fallen soldiers with flowers, wreaths, or plaques, or all of the above. And so, uh, we're entitled today, remember not to forget. Memorial Day was designed to memorialize or to remember people that have given their lives for our freedom that we enjoy today. And <clears throat> not only have people given their lives in the United States, but throughout the entire world, people have fought uh, for causes for the sake of freedom, liberation from oppression, uh, from tyranny, uh, from uh, dictatorships. Uh, and, and so uh, people have been uh, fighting to have uh, their, 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 their knees of, uh, of, of oppressors off of their necks, so to speak, being that we're in the era of the George Floyd era. And so, uh, to, to memorialize or to remember those that have fallen, uh, to, to see to it that we have uh, the freedom that we enjoy today is something that we should not forget. We should be thankful uh, for the freedom that we enjoy today. Thank God for the shoulders on which we stand. We didn't get here by ourselves. Someone lost their life in order that we might live. Someone gave up their freedom and their rights, even went to prison, or were tortured, or tormented, or they were battered, or bruised, or abused, so that we might enjoy the freedoms that we have today. So thanks be to God for those, uh, those uh, women uh, and those men that decided that, well, we're not going to uh, ride your buses until you give us equal rights. We're going to boycott, and we'll walk, right. no matter how long, no, no matter how many miles it takes to walk, but until you recognize us as equal mm -hmm. and give us equal and fair treatment, we're not riding your buses. Amen. And so people were jailed. Dogs were sick upon them. Mm -hmm. uh, they were uh, beaten with, uh, with uh, batons. Uh, they were fire holes, and they were shamefully mistreated in jail. Mm -hmm. But to God be the glory, they were determined, amen, that this shall not be moved. Amen. They're not going to let anybody turn them around. All right. I think they said, I ain't going to let nobody turn me around, turn me around, turn me around. I ain't going to let nobody turn me around. I'm going to keep on walking, keep on talking. And whatever the, the songs that they sang, yeah. amen, it was all about that freedom and don't quit. Amen. 
uh, remember that you're standing on the shoulders of some people that were strong. Amen. Even uh, for those of us of the African American culture, uh, our forefathers and foremothers that were brought over on slave ships, all well, those conditions were, weren't so pleasant. It wasn't a cruise. They weren't cruised over. They were brought, brought against their will, uh, against their will, shackled and chained. Amen. In bondage, and many of them died uh, while being transported in a, a claustrophobic, sardinish type of con condition. Amen. That were deplorable. Uh, and so we thank God for the ones that survived to get us here. Amen. To this country. Amen. Even still in slavery, but we thank God that their hope was put on the Lord, put in the Lord to get them through. Yeah. And so all day long while. Uh, working in, in that hot, torrid sun from 6 a.m. to maybe 9, 10 p.m., amen, uh, they would still sing those songs, amen. And uh, even those that were shackled and, and chained uh, on the chain gangs, amen, uh, you know, this old hammer killed John Henry. This old hammer Kill John Henry. And they would just have to sing these songs, amen, amen, uh, to get them through the day, yeah. to get them through whatever they were going through. Yeah. They had to keep their eyes on the prize. They had to keep lifting their heads and their eyes to the Lord, unto the hills. For well, what's come with our help? Because our help comes from the Lord that made the heavens and the earth. But remember not to forget. There's a scripture verse in the book of Acts, chapter 10, verses 1 through 4. I'm going to read that for you. Here it is. Acts, chapter 10, verses 1 through 4. Word of God declares, there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man and one that feared God with all his house which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thy alms are come up for a memorial before God. So, when I saw that scripture, I said, well, thank you, Lord, because you are the living, classic example of why we should be remembering certain things. And that the remembrance of services that are performed have rewards, and especially rewards from you, from heaven. Now, the rewards of man, they come and go, they fade. The appreciation of man come and go, but thanks be to God, he's an everlasting father. Amen. He's a God that is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's a God that cares about us so much so that he says, commit your ways unto the Lord, you thought you'll be established. But it also says that, that we need to cast our cares upon him because he cares. Yes, yes. And that means continuously yes. cares for us. Yes, when some folks care about you today and forget about you today, oh, yeah. <laughs> much less care about you today and forget about you tomorrow, but care about you today and forget you today. Oh, Matter of fact, sometimes moments late. <laughs> but to God be the glory, we serve a God, amen, uh, yes. who remember yes. what this man was doing when it didn't seem like no one even understood what he was going through or what he was doing to serve the Lord because he was doing it privately yes. as unto the Lord. He wasn't blowing trumpets about giving to the poor. He, he wasn't patting himself on the back about how great he was and being philanthropic. Fell, fell well, I gave $25 million and, you know, yay, yeah, look at me. Mm -hmm. No, uh, he, he was very humble yes. in his deportment mm -hmm. to the point uh, that he did it as the Lord said, if you do it secretly, yes, Lord. the Lord will reward Lord. you yes. openly. Oh, yes. And so we find yes. here, apparently it was done secretly because the word of God says, it says, uh, the Lord said, mm -hmm. your prayers and your alms, in other words, the things that you've given uh, out of love, for pity and mercy upon people that were less fortunate to you, he said, 
your prayers, which means that our prayers are important to God. When you think, well, what, what's important to you, God, that, that I, 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 I climb the highest mountain, I, I, I swim the widest ocean, mm -hmm. that I tunnel the deepest uh, uh, mountain uh, underneath or whatever, go and do some great feet? God's saying, no, what I consider as commendable and noteworthy is your prayer life yeah. that we pray. Yeah. And it's those effectual, fervent prayers of the righteous that are very much. He said, your prayers and your alms, your giving, your, your, your loving and caring on people, it says, are come up for a memorial before God. Right. A memorial, something that has been commemorated and that will continuously be honored. Now, remember there was a woman uh, that, uh, with her tears, she used her tears to wash the feet of Jesus. And, he, and she dried his feet with her hair. Yes. And I think she put ointment on him as well, whether it be on his feet, his, his head, or both. Uh, and Jesus, uh, the, the word of God never mentioned her name, but Jesus let everybody else know. Even though this man, woman's name was never mentioned, as this gospel is preached, it will be a memorial yes. for this woman yes. forever. Yes. Every time the gospel is preached, it'll be a memorial unto this woman. Yes. Isn't that something? Yes. Praise the Lord. So even when her name, when her name yes. is not mentioned, yes, Lord. but her personhood, yes. her spirit, yes, Lord. it's mentioned by the Lord, and it's important to God. Yes. Amen. Yes. So that in the day of judgment, yes. and when we get to heaven, when we all get to heaven, when the day of rejoicing that's going to be, yes, Lord. when we see Jesus, when we see the the victory, yes. Amen, but we're going to see that woman. Yeah. And, and probably with wonderment, I wonder who she was. I wonder where she was from. Mm -hmm. I wonder what she looks like. Uh, was she rich? Was she poor? Right. We, we don't know. But the thing is, we're going to see her one day. Yeah. Praise the Lord. And we're going to see the matriarchs and the patriarchs of faith. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And so the word of God is memorialized in scripture. Mm -hmm. And there are people. Amen. That are recognized as you go to the great hall of faith in the book of Hebrews. And you find all of these great matriarchs and patriarchs that have done exploits for the Lord, mm -hmm. have been humble and submissive to the Lord during uh, uh, in, uh, torture and in, enslavement, uh, during captivity, uh, uh, against all odds, when all of the odds were against them. They still maintained their integrity. They yes. still trusted God. Mm -hmm. They still operated and walked yes. in faith. Amen. They still believed God. Yes. Even when uh, all hope was dashed and all yes. hope was lost. Amen. Mm -hmm. And when, when their lives were in despair, when they were in despair of life and of yes. living, they still kept their eyes on the prize. They still kept looking to the Lord. Yes. They kept yes. amen, seeking the face of God for the Lord promised me, said, seek me. He said, and you shall seek me and you shall find me. When you shall search me with all of your heart, and I will be bound of you. Yes. Said the Lord. And so they were taking God in his word. They said, Lord, I, I, I don't know how this is going to work, but I'm just going to do it. I'm going to trust you. Because the word says, trust in the Lord, God of your heart. He not will be your own understanding, all of your ways, acknowledge him, and he will be your own understanding. So, God, I'm going to take you at your word. Remembered and, and things that uh, God, God also wants to be reminded. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Amen. That's what memorials do. Matter of fact, tomorrow Memorial Day, you want to see uh, plaques in front of libraries or town halls or wherever they might be at grave sites and things. And it's going to be a memorial to remind you that so and so or several individuals, certain individuals, lost their lives for the sake of our freedom. Yes. So they're going to be recognized. And in military cemeteries, you're going to see flags at each gravesite, respectively, amen, and respect for respectfully lined up, amen, in perfect alignment, amen, uh, uh, across the entire cemetery, praise Lord, to recognize soldiers that have fallen in, in the line of duty or that have served their country. It's a memorial, praise God, to remind. We need reminders. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Anybody need a reminder from time to time? Yes, Lord. I think we all do. Yes. That's why the Word of God, the Word of God reminds us yes. who we are. Yes. The Word of God reminds us who we are. Yes. It reminds us, amen, uh, that, that, that we don't have to worry about uh, 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 this life, amen, yeah. uh, and all the trials and tests, because we know that there's going to be troubles. Yeah. There's going to be trials. We know yeah. there's going to be tests and tribulations. Yeah. It's going to be like, amen. Yeah. But, 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 but take hope, amen, yeah. because God's got this, amen. Yeah. No one can have a form of peace. No God to go to But we need to go to the Word of God to remind us of the promises of God. Yeah. This is God's yeah. promise book, amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Some of the girls years ago used to have the little promise book. Amen. Yeah. Uh, anybody used to keep, ladies used to keep the promise book when you were young? Who, who kept the promise book? Somebody promised you, you know, certain things. People promised you to go to bed with a little book. No. Oh, no, you did that back. Oh, you did? Okay, all right. Now go on. Praise the Lord. Amen. No, no promise book. Somebody promised you something, you wrote it down. Amen. Now, nowadays, uh, you might call it a bucket list. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord, we're, that, that we're, we're kind of contemporizing things. A bucket list is the things that you would like to do and that you would like to accomplish. So that's a promise that you're promising to yourself. <laughs> but there were uh, girls that used to keep little uh, promise books, and then uh, when people would promise them something, they would write it down, and then as the, the promise uh, came to fruition, they check it off to not read the book. So they had their little promise book. Now, this is God's promise book to us. Amen. And it's memorialized. It's written in, in ink and, yeah. and, and paper. Yeah. Amen. So that, that there's no there's no disputing it. Amen. Right. Uh, that this is what God said. This is what God intends. This is what God commanded. This is what God wants. This is what God says you are. This is what God this is who God says you are and who you are. Praise God. It's his promise book. So over in Genesis chapter 9. Thank you, Lord. Genesis chapter 9, verse 8. I'm going to read down to verse number 17. Just in chapter 9, verse 8 to 17. And, and God spake unto Noah and to his sons with him, saying, And I, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you and with every living creature that is with you of the bow of the, bow of the cattle and of every beast of the earth with you from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth. This is God dealing with the Noah and his, his son after the, after the flood. He said, And I will establish my covenant with you, neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of the flood, neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual Generous. That means forever and ever and ever and ever. No end. Perpetual. Verse 13. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass, when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember. Thank you, God. I will remember. This is God talking. I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature and of, of all flesh, and the waters shall, not, shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bowl shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, 
that I, I may that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. Verse 17, and God said unto Noah, This is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. Mm -hmm. So look what God has done. All right. He's established a covenant and, and an agreement to remind him not to destroy this earth anymore by flood. Yeah. So when uh, this this is <laughs> God, God had to set a reminder. So sometimes you have to set the alarm clock to remind you to wake up. Amen. Go to work, go to school, go to church, whatever. Amen. But get this, God had to set a rainbow in the sky right. to remind him that when his fury, which was so hot against mankind in this earth that he just wanted to wipe us out one more time with his blood, because he just fed up with everybody. <laughs> I know it's everybody. But when he started with everybody, right. amen, everything, amen, and he, 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 his, his rage is so furious against this world that he just wants to destroy it with a flood. He commanded the rainbow to stand up in front of him. Now, wait a minute. There's nothing that can withstand God or stand up in God's face mm -hmm. and make God stop anything. Mm -hmm. But what God did was he gave the rainbow that kind of power. Right. Yes. That kind of authority. He said, listen, rainbow, when I'm ready to destroy this earth and wipe these people out, mm -hmm. I command you to stand in front of oh, me, 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 stand in front of you, God. Oh, God, oh, 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 God, oh, God, I can't do that. You, God, I'm, I'm just a, I'm just a little poor, pure little meat and a rainbow. Mm -hmm. God said, I command you to stand up in front of me, mm -hmm. to remind me. Not so, Lord, you can't do this. You promised, you swore by your name, by your authority and your power, and you, you commanded me to stand before you. And I, I can't remember how many times I've seen rainbows. Yeah. How about yeah, you? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. One time, we went to Hampton Ministers Conference. Uh -huh. We came, had a wonderful time. We're coming back from Hampton Ministers Conference. I had never seen clouds so black in the daytime in my life. It looked like it was evening. The sky was so black. Those storm clouds, they, they were so black. It was around three o'clock, four o'clock in the afternoon. Sun was bright at one moment, crystal blue skies, not a cloud in the sky. And then all of a sudden, you have these black clouds rolling, and it rained, 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 didn't it rain? Lord, at first, I mean, we were going to a uh, like, tiny floods, and I thought we were in for it, that we were going to have to just pull off the road and, and, and just wait this storm out. Uh, then all of a sudden, the, 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 the clouds rolled away, the rain stopped, the clouds rolled away, bright blue sky again, nice sunshine, and then all of a sudden, we saw not just one rainbow, but we saw a double rainbow. And way up above that lower rainbow was another rainbow. Wow. And I think it was myself, uh, was Reverend Margaret, were you with us? And Reverend Dr. Molly Davis? Wow. And Reverend Turner? Right? Maybe there was the four of us in the car. Right? There were six of us or so. Maybe it was a band. But we were having church right. in this vehicle coming back to New Jersey. Said, Dr. Davis, Dr. Dr. Look. And he says, Ooh, Lord. You know, Dr. Davis got so excited, she had to take out her handkerchief. <laughs> you know, wipe her eyes and never turn and just, she just got quiet, praise God, and just looked in glory because of a double rainbow. Because God had promised. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I want you to remind me when I'm ready to destroy the planet, when a flood stop on my face. And I command you to stand up and remind me not to destroy the earth again with the flood. Amen. Look at this, though, uh, about God uh, 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 is not unrighteous to forget. He's not unrighteous to forget. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10. This is one verse. But Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10 says this. For God 
is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown towards his name, and that you have ministered to the saints and do ministry. So the things that you've been doing privately and secretly and ministering to the saints, helping somebody along the way, encouraging someone, praying for someone, just spending a little time to, you know, share words of, of, of comfort. Yes. God noticed that and recognized that to the point that it is written in the word of God that God yes. is not unrighteous to forget. Because when, when you look at that phrase, God is not unrighteous to forget, the flip side of the saying is to forget is to be unrighteous. But God is not unrighteous. To forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown towards his name, in that you have ministered to the saints. That's past tense, but you're still doing it. Right. You're still ministering to the saints. God loves that. God's excited about that. And he's remembering it, not to forget. Hallelujah. And then Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25, just to show you how uh, God has everything uh, written down, or at least has everything recorded. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25, verse number 31. Matthew 25, verse 31. Please pray with me. I hope you hope you pray with me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew 25, verse 31. And these are the words of Jesus. He said, When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divided the sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the, on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was a hunger, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in, mm -hmm. naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came in unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, <laughs> Lord, when shall we thee hunger and fed thee or thirsty and gave you drink? When shall we you a stranger and took you in or naked and clothed you? Or when shall we you sick or in prison and came unto you? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, it's a sure, it's true, a, a, a truth. True, I say unto you, inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it to me. So if you've done it to even to one of the least of these, my brethren, All right. one of the least of these out of the family of God, mm -hmm. you have done it to me. That's how I look at it. That's what God said. I look at it as if you have done it to me, because you did it unto one of the least of these that belong to me. Yeah, God. Hey. 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 Amen. And so, then shall we say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Mm -hmm. For I was hungry, and you gave me no meat. Wow. I was thirsty, you gave me no drink. I was a stranger. You took me not in naked and I was and not sick and in prison and you visited me not. Then shall they answer him, say, oh, Lord, when shall we, you hunger or a thirst or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Well. Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you did it not to one of the least of these, you did it not to 
to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. So it's not about all of those high food and hobnobbing big weight people that you try to get recognition for. Well, look what I've done for the president. Look what I've done for the senator or the congressperson. Look what I've done for the judge. Look what I've done for the chief. Look what I've done for this person, the superintendent of this, you know, people that have labels and titles and authority. Yeah. And, and, and you're expecting something in return, especially recognition. The Lord no. said, no. It doesn't count. Right. And it, it's, it's the least of these, those yes. that are suffering, the, yes. the poor, yes. the widows, the, yes. the orphans, yes. the motherless, the fathers, right. the homeless, right. the disenfranchised, those people that can't help themselves because yes. of being oppressed and suppressed. Yes. So I, I, I'm recognizing that yes. because you're helping your brother, yes. you're helping your sister, you're bringing people up out of the oh, yes. of the yes. Yes. you're bringing them out of the pit, yes. out of the fiery yes. furnace. Yes. Right. And you're giving them, amen, life because you're presenting them to Jesus. You're, you're, you're offering them salvation through Jesus today. The one that is the way, the truth, and the right. Because no man comes to the Father but by him, praise the Lord. And so as we let our light shine before these people, they will see our good works. Wondering, why do you do this? I mean, I'm poor, I'm homeless, I can't return the favor. I can't pay you back. Why are you doing this for me? Because the world says that, you know, you're only going to help those that can help, uh, pay you back, that can uh, return the favor. But, but why are you doing this for me? Because I have nothing to give, nothing to offer. I'm nobody. And yet you're spending time on me to show me that I have worth, that I have value, that I'm important. I don't understand it. And that's what the Lord says. I will let your light shine for them. They will see your good works and they will cause them to question and say, Why are you doing this? Let's give you an opportunity to answer. To say, Because it is Jesus that loves you in this. And so to come back to me, and then that he will be calling to me and supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory. But more importantly, to the earthly and bedly and human needs, he wants to give you eternal life.
up in more of a day. Okay. And then I end up remembering the time I wrote, well, when they died. Mm -hmm. Well. And then where they died. Mm -hmm. But then I asked the question, why did they die? Well. Because I know who died, uh -huh. when they died, where they died, how they died. Yes. But why did they die? Wow. Why would they pick up a cause to fight and to possibly sacrifice and lose their lives for what? Yes. What is the reason? Jesus. Apparently they had to believe in the cause yes. or they, against their will, were fighting against the cause that they did not support. But either way, they died. Yes. And whether a life was lost valiantly, yes. voluntarily, wow. or lost valiantly, involuntarily, uh -huh. the life was still lost. Come on, Brad. Blood was shed. Yes. Someone died. Yes. And so if the ultimate sacrifice of someone dying was to now give us the freedoms that we have, yes. don't you think that we should continue to protect those freedoms? Yes. Yes. Not let those freedoms uh, be taken away. Yes. Or not even to forfeit those freedoms. Uh, and then on the forget side, uh -huh. it is the forget side. I actually brought the I, I brought a forget on the uh -huh. remember side. Right. Why they died, and then who was responsible for their death. Uh -huh. So there are people that are going to have to give an account for the lives that were lost because of their own personal grief, uh -huh. or because they had desire for power. Yeah. An authority position wanted to control. So we're going to go to this country and we're going to kill all of these people because we want your gold. We're going to kill all of these people because we want your minerals. We're going to kill all of these people and go to war because we want your we want your oil. We're going to go to this country because we want your marijuana. One of the wars was fought over marijuana, and we didn't even know it. That's true. That's true. Because of the money uh -huh. that could be garnered for marijuana. Mm -hmm. In one of the countries that marijuana grows plenteously, where the soil and marijuana together is a perfect marriage, where it grows all year round. Fertile soil, and can bring in trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars. You know where that was? I don't. Vietnam. Yes. Vietnam. So we have people fighting each other because somebody else in the hierarchy wants control. It had nothing to do with the South Vietnamese and the North Vietnamese. It had nothing to do with China and Korea. You know, it, it was about somebody that just wanted power and control. And it didn't matter who have, has, had to lose their lives to get that power and control. Because I want it. But these people are losing. So what? I want it. We went into one particular war after one president was pressed, with George Bush Jr. And the news commentators kept pressing him and pressing him, why were you, why were you going into this war? And he kept giving the political correct answer mm -hmm. until he had enough. They said, oh, it's just because of what they did to my father. The truth came out. Uh -huh. That was the real reason all these people had to lose their lives, because of what they did to your father. Uh -huh. What did they do to your father? They didn't give him. And so we've got to, we've got to remember to educate our children and our grandchildren and on and on and on and one another, amen, as to keeping our hands on the wheel, not the stern, because 
there are a whole lot of entities that are trying to take it under, mm -hmm. trying to deceive folks. Mm -hmm. And they'll use deception. People tend to have what is called selective Mem memory. That's right, In other words, it's the tendency to remember only what one wants or chooses to remember. That's in its most insidious and malicious form, selective memory is sometimes regarded as a common trait amongst narcissists and other malignantly self-centered individuals. Mm -hmm. So those true narcissists, they can care less about you or anybody else. It's only about their self-interest, mm -hmm. self-centered interest. However, when regarding narcissists, Selective memory tends to be more calculated and intentional rather than clinical. I'm amazed at how they're trying to insult our intelligence as a nation. That January the 6th of 2021, how they're trying to convince us it was not an insurrection. That it wasn't a civil war. Mm -hmm. Whereas just within the day or several days after, they were rebuking the President of the United States for being responsible. Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden, months later, those same people that said, well, we, we need a commission to investigate this, and we want to get to the root of it, cause of what happened. Those exact same people trying to insult my intelligence. I don't know about you. No. Those exact same people are saying, well, there's no reason to do that. Uh, let's forget that. Don't we remember that? Why, why rehash those details? We should be doing greater things like dealing with making our government work. But wait a minute. If you don't remember okay. what took place back then, mm -hmm. it's bound to repeat itself okay. in the future if you don't set up some protocol amen, to deal with that situation. That's why it was implemented 100 years ago. Duh. All right. And as a result of it happening, they implemented it then. They were wiser then than we are now. And you went to Harvard. And yeah, and Princeton and Dartmouth mm -hmm. to the Ivy League schools, Rome scholars, you trillionaires, billionaires, you should know better, and you do know better. But to try to insult the intelligence of the populace to also say, well, you know, the same person that was now rebuking, or persons that were rebuking what took place on January 6th, I said, well, it was just it was just like a, a Washington tour. It wasn't a riot. They, they were just on a, a nice tour. Taking bear spray, tear gas, in police officers' faces, hitting them with bats, with flagpoles, steel metal rods, throwing fire. Uh, uh, extinguishers, hitting them in the head, running them over, injuring at least 140 police officers. That was an enjoyable, pleasant tour. Excuse me? So we have to remember those things. And there are people that do know better. But right now they're scared, like they were two impeachments ago. They were scared to put Donald Trump in his place. Now, I'm not representing Second Baptist Church as a church now by the state. So the church is not responsible for what I'm saying, because I'm talking about Donald Trump. This is me, so I have to pay uh, full consequences for what I'm saying. The church is. I'm not even saying the church is endorsing my statement just now. But I am saying 
Amen. That people are afraid of a person that can control their future when it comes to the elections in 2022 and 2024. And they're more concerned about them being reelected and put in office than dealing with our nation as a whole and its safety therein. Because already, we've had how many mass shootings since the beginning of the year? Mass shootings. How many more people have to die? We're looking for a uniform federal uh, regulations and then for gun control. But yet, there are people now in the hierarchy positions in poli a particular political party that are, and because they have the authority and because they have the majority, rather, they're now saying that the state of Texas can have permitless purchasing of guns. Permitless. You don't even have to, have to be checked out. No, you don't have to get a permit. Just go to this candy store and buy one. Buy an assault with a rifle. Buy a revolver. Buy whatever you want. You don't need a permit. We don't need to know if you're a psycho. We don't need to know if you're bipolar, tripolar, polar polar. We don't need to know anything about you. We don't even know, need to know if you're nuts or crazy or Charles Manson, or Charles Manson, or Jeffrey Dahmer. We don't need to know. We don't want to know that. We just want to make sure that we're paying our sponsors back that got us elected. So we can enjoy the nice uh, jet set trips across the, the world when we go as ambassadors and representatives and meet all of these people and eat the finest of foods and, and the greatest of hotels and the greatest of treatment and, and, and have our personal entourage and bodyguards around us and we can just uh, enjoy the high life because we love the high life. And once people have tasted of that high life, they compromise themselves. You can't compromise yourself. Because there are still poor people at stake. And even though we talk about the middle class, yes, thank God for the middle class, because the middle class, amen, is paying most of the bills, making most of, uh, of, 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 the, of the sacrifices for our country and our world to survive. Amen. But don't forget the poor people. Yeah. Don't forget the laborers. Yeah. Amen. Don't forget those essential workers yeah. that have to go to work when you can elect not to go to work, that have to go to work when you can work at home on the computer. Yeah. They have to go to work and be in those environments. There are certain essential workers that regardless of pandemics or whatever, they have to go to work. Hospitals have to operate. Police forces have to operate. Medical emergency uh, technicians have to, they have to work. And there are other professors, amen, that without them doing what's necessary, you won't get water from your faucet. You won't get electricity when you try to turn on the lights. You won't get gasoline in your car or whatever other necessary service that you need, you won't get milk from the cows. Uh -huh. Cows on strike. Because nobody wants to do it the old fashioned way. Uh -huh. There's just too many millions of people to drink milk or use milk. Hmm. Hmm. So remember not to forget, I can go on and on and on, but let's, let's bring it to a close. Wives, remember not to forget your husband's need for more facts than details during conversations. Husbands, remember not to forget your wife's birthday or wedding anniversary. Thank you.
Mas ele é o bom. Deus é esta, dá para mim que gosta. Amo, é ele que ama. Especialmente no meu nome. Margaret Almador, 620, 76. Just in case, I forget. I have a memorial. 29, so I don't get in trouble like some husbands. Because, oh boy. I don't want to ask, do I have a witness? Because I don't want to put you in trouble again, because that will remind your wife. That's right, he did forgive her. And her spirit, so I don't want to cause any problems at home. Children, remember not to forget to clean up your room and do your chores. Homeowners, remember not to forget to pay your boards, to pay your taxes, to pay all your utility bills, to mow the lawn, to trim the hedges, to fix the roof, to service the furniture, to fix the plumbing, to paint the house, to clean the gutters. Young people, remember not to forget your creator in the days of your youth. Forget not your creator in the days of your youth. While the evil days come not. The evil days haven't come yet. But before they come, make sure that is a, a healthy part and a, a vital part of your life and your lifestyle. Because you're going to need him when they come. Believe me when I say it. Do I have a witness? You're going to need him big time. So while you're going through your sowing of the wild oaks days and being young and, and buying, uh, you know, well, then we do with my talent and all the rest of that. And, you know, your hair is flowing and your teeth are like, you know, and your eyes and, and you, you know, you, you swole and you know, all the rest of that. Amen. The evil days are coming. Amen. And so, uh, in, in, in the days that, I mean, you, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw not, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. That's what Ecclesiastes. 12 verse 1, by the way. Because eventually, things are going to change. I had perfect vision. As a youngster, I could see that fly cross the street on somebody's fence. And I perfectly still came. Because <laughs> my eyes haven't changed that way. But they changed this way because, you know. <laughs> And actually, I'm so glad. Who, who wears that glasses here? Who wears that? Okay. okay. See, I'm so glad that I'm not like the rest of y'all that have to wear our glasses. I'm so glad that I'm not like y'all. I'm going to use my glasses when I want to see. All right. Wow. <laughs> You're in there. Yeah. 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 Because I am like y'all. <laughs> I need them because I need to see. Yes. To God be the glory. When things change, yes. amen. Yes. Uh, can anybody still jump on cars if the dog is chasing you? Oh. I'm talking about us older folks now. Praise God. Still play football with, with the 18 year olds? Tackle. No. <laughs> can still get in the boxing ring with uh, you know, those modern day. Uh, gold, gold glove champions and box room, anybody? Come out and come through the type one. Things have changed. And as a matter of fact, sometimes I, I jump on the scale and move it. They say, I put one foot down. Make a difference. You know? Things change. And so sometimes we try our very best, you know, to either do a maintenance program, but it, doesn't happen. Our body's resisting that. What do they call that? The thyroid or something? What is that? Uh, where, where it metabolizes uh, and breaks down uh, uh, things in your in your body where you know weight can just you know be maintained, regulated. But then after a while, when when it's uh, is that, am I saying the right thing? Like the thyroid gland or something? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Where sometimes it's just sluggish, and then all of a sudden. It, doesn't metabolize or break down the foods and things, and, 
and you just continuously gain weight, gain weight, gain weight, and you're trying to exercise. I saw this woman that used to walk from Broadway to Elizabeth almost every day. Going down, going down St. George Avenue. She was constantly walking back and forth. She would never take the bus and always walking. And she was physically fit. And then years later, I saw the same lady. And she's getting bigger and bigger and still walking. And she's getting bigger and bigger and still walking because her body was changing. So sometimes we're just subject to our own bodies. Yeah. Trying as best as we can, doing all the exercise, eating right, and all the rest of that, but just that sometimes our body is just taking over. Yeah. Yeah. I never knew or never saw Charles Stanley, the preacher, that was on the radio mm -hmm. and on TV, but I never saw him. I always heard Charles Stanley over the radio, but when he was elderly, was the first time that I saw Charles Stanley. And his skin under his neck was hanging down like a turkey. Now I'm sure his skin wasn't hanging down like a turkey when he was a young youngster. But that's what happens to us. Gravity just takes over. The hair gets a little thin. Look at this. I used to have a big ass friend. Me too. The girls in college used to comb over my head, my hair, and sometimes it'd be so tight I look like this. Yeah. And I was in pain for at least two days. Because it was so tight. I would braid Afro pinks, the ones with metal. Trying to go through my coarse hair. But things have changed. You see this fine tooth comb? I can do this. Amen. And I hope I didn't pull any hair out. Life changes. We go, we're not as strong as we used to be. We're not as intelligent as we used to be. Sometimes we forget some things, our memory. Uh, and to the point that some folks have told me forgot, who's this? I don't know. <laughs> Well, you knew everything. You knew everybody's birthday, you knew everybody lived, you knew everybody's telephone number. Nowadays, you don't even know who you are. <laughs> we forget. But that's not selective amnesia. That's not selective memory loss. That, that just happens clinically. We just, that happens. But some people choose to intentionally forget certain things. Oh, that didn't happen. And it did happen. And they know it happened. And they know that they know that we know that they know it happened. But they're trying to insult our intelligence. So we need to know the difference of those type of people. And so, as I was saying, we're going to close. That's why with this coronavirus vaccine, folks that jumped on the bandwagon with the former president to say that this was a democratic hoax. The coronavirus, it was not a, a, a democratic hoax. Or a Republican hoax or whatever. He said it was a democratic hoax. And so as a result, yeah, yeah, it's a democratic hoax. It's a democratic hoax. And they made sure everybody knew, oh, it's just a big democratic hoax. It's a big democratic hoax. Now they find out it was not a democratic hoax, but they can't get the vaccine because if they do, they're admitting that they were wrong. And they were about to die. Then admit that they were wrong. Swallow your pride. If you're wrong, you're wrong. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I've said it so many times over this over this pulpit. If I've said something and misrepresented, and I found out later it was wrong, I tell you now, even though I can't retract. And I can't, that water that went under the bridge and the milk that was filled, I can't recover that. But at least I can tell you, I was wrong then, and I know something better now. And I'm telling you, I was wrong. God's right. Amen. Let every man be a liar, and let God be true. So if God is telling you that you're wrong, let God be true. Yes. Don't try to fend for yourself and ignore it and say, well, you know. 
was a misnomer or just avoid the issue altogether. Don't do that. Let God be God. Let God get the glory. Yes. Let the world know that God peeped your whole car. Okay. That God exposed you and for your own edification, for your own growth, for your own benefit. Because it's about God at the end of the day. God gets the glory. I don't want it. I don't want the glory that belongs to God. Nobody should ever. All the glory belongs to God. Whatever you are, whatever you accomplish, whatever you do, and then all of those experts that you've accomplished and achieved, it was because of God. See, because I can brag and boast about how smart I am, and I can tell you about the postulation of theories and theorems, and I can tell you about this and that and the other, all of these theorems, and, and postulate and all the rest of that, and pontificate. Say, that's how smart I am, God. God said, oh, really? Well, give me my intellect back that I put in your brain. Don't you? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I'm strong. I'm powerful. I'm mighty. I do my work at work. If my weight jumps I'm strong. I don't need God. He didn't give me the strength. God said, oh, really? Give me back my strength and my muscle. No, 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 See, because I trained my voice. God didn't make me. God didn't make me a singer. I made me a singer. No, 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 Whatever will be, whatever have been, is because of God. He gets to go and don't forget it. Don't forget it. Remember to give God the glory. That hymn, number eight, one says, King of my life. I told thee that. Thine shall the glory be. Lest I forget thy thorn crowned brow, lead me to Calvary. Lest I forget Gethsemane. Lest I forget thy agony. Lest I forget. Thy love for me. Lead me to Calvary. That's what it's all about, folks. Stop remembering the Lord. Give him the glory. Give him the praise. Don't forget your roots. Don't forget your family train and upbringing. Remember those things that mama taught you, no matter how much or how little or insignificant that you felt that it was, she gave her best. Yeah, yeah. Remember what papa taught. Yeah. Remember your family upbringing. Remember your church upbringing. Remember the days of your youth. People made sacrifices to get you to where you are today. You did not get here on your own. Somebody went without so that you could have. So be grateful. And then be responsible to help somebody else. Take a song like say, If I can help somebody with a word or a song. If I can help with a word or a song, if I can show somebody that the truth
If I can do
mind, everything over yes. to the Lord. That he might be your Lord, your God, your Savior. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, Jesus. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And it's a simple prayer of faith by asking the Lord something like this. Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins. Come into my heart, Lord, and save me. Lord, I'm so filthy. Wash me and cleanse me of all of my sins. Make me a new creature. Make me your child. And help me to live for you and serve you the rest of the days of my life. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God and that you died for the sins of the world. And I receive you and accept you as my Lord, my God, and my Savior. In Jesus' name. And if you pray that prayer, Jesus Christ has entered in. Amen. Go to a church where they're practicing the Lord Jesus Christ who lived and he died. He was buried. Amen. Rose again on the third day and is right now seated on the right hand of the Father of God, soon to become, soon to come back and return for his, his children. Yes. For his church. Without spot or wrinkle or blemish or any such thing. May God bless you, bless you, have his smile upon you. Thank you for joining in with us here at Second Baptist Church today, 200 Logan Street, all the way from the borough of Roselle, New Jersey, in the United States of America. We're not a perfect church by any means, but we serve a perfect Savior. His name is Jesus. And should you desire to join us, amen, communicate with us. We can see what's necessary to get you to become a member of this wonderful church. Again, not a perfect church, amen, but we're striving to become more and more like that perfect Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ, of whom we do so. May God richly bless you, heaven smile upon you. Father, we thank you for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, our souls have felt. We've come to worship you and to hear from you. Now we go forth to serve you and let our light shine through. So now, Lord God, go with us and stand by us. Protect us from all hurt, harm, and danger seen and unseen. Give us traveling mercies and safety. Bless us and make us a blessing until we meet again in Jesus' name. And now in the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost, may he rest rule and abide with us both now and forth and evermore. Let all of God's people sing. Thank you.